unstoppable, 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 yeah. God is unstoppable, 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 yeah. Hello, everyone. I'm Rebecca. Are you ready to learn about how God is unstoppable? Me too. Unstoppable means can't be stopped. Let's learn, sing, and pray to our unstoppable God today. Get on up. Let's play a little game. For this game, you have to do what I ask you to do. Are you ready? First, jump up and down three times. Nice job. Now, give me a big thumbs up. Wow, you're doing exactly what I tell you to do. Okay, last thing. Show me your most silly face. That was so silly. You did such a good job doing what I asked you to do. That's called obeying. You obeyed my directions so well. Listen for the word obey in our Bible story later. But for right now, stay on your feet and let's worship God with a song. Let's move and sing together. Get ready! He's got a, he's got a, he's got a plan. He's got a, he's got a, yes he do. He's got a plan for me, he's got a plan for me. He's got a really, really, really awesome plan for me. He's got a plan for me. He's got a plan for me. He's got a really, really, really awesome plan for me. That's what I know. Oh, that's what I know. That's what I know. Oh, that's what I know. Let's go. I know that I can trust him. Yeah. I know that I can trust him. Yeah. No matter what the season. Yeah. His plans are for a reason. Yeah. I know they are good. I know they are bad. Take a seat. Five, four, three, two, one. Now for a true story from the Bible. The Bible is from God and it's true. That's why we read it. Today we're going to hear a story found in the book of Genesis, chapters 12 through 15. In today's story, we'll meet a man named Abram. Abram lived a long time ago in a place called Haran with his wife Sarai and their family. God had a big plan for Abram. But first, Abram needed to obey and do what God told him to do. God told Abram to move to a new place with his family and all their stuff. That's a hard thing to do. Let's see if Abram decided to obey God. Abram lived in Haran with his wife Sarai and his nephew Lot. His flocks of sheep produced the fuzziest wool in the land, 
and his goats provided the finest goat milk cheese. Me. Believe it. Though Abram had many servants and herders and every good thing he could possibly want, sometimes it was still hard to sleep at night. We have no children. What do all these other things matter? Sarai slept soundly, but Abram crept out of the tent. <sighs> Maybe I just need a bedtime snack. Some goat's milk and a few grapes. Abram pulled his cloak tight against the chilly night air and headed briskly toward the grape arbor. The soft slap of his sandals on the ground seemed like the only sound in the world. Until... Abram. <gasps> Who's there? He tore aside grape vines, searching for the source of the voice. Abram. Abram stumbled through the thicket of vines and plunged right out on the other side. There's no one. It must be. Is it God? Now, the people of Haran worshipped many false gods, thinking that they were the real deal, but Abram knew this was something different. Someone different. Leave your country and your people. Leave your father's family. Go to the land I will show you. Leave? This place, it's my home. I'm already 75. Abram, I will make you into a great nation. I will bless you. I will make your name great. You will be a blessing to others. The words of the Lord were staggering. Though Abram had no children now, God was promising him enough kids and grandkids to fill the entire country. You sure you don't have me confused with someone else? All nations on earth will be blessed because of you. Wow, God. I don't know what to say. I mean, except, uh, well, I'll go. There was no way Abram was going back to sleep after that. He walked through the hills all night, returning home at the first light of dawn, rousing the whole household from their beds. I need you to pack everything and prepare all the herds for a long journey. On it. <sighs> Abram's wife, Sarai, rubbed the sleep from her eyes. Where are we going? For how long? I don't know. You don't know where or how long? Both. Abram's nephew, Lot, yawned. <sighs> this is all a joke. I'm going back to bed. No, no. God spoke to me. A god. Which god? The one true god. He wouldn't tell us to do something that wouldn't turn out well, right? But surely everyone would listen to God if that were true. Please, trust me. Trust the one true God. Now, it wasn't an easy job to prepare dozens of people and hundreds of animals for a one-way trip to who knows where, but at last, they set out on the trail. In fact, Abram and his family traveled on foot for hundreds of miles until they finally reached the land God had spoken of. This land, it's even more beautiful than Haran. The grass is so thick, our goats will make richer milk than ever. And bees? Well, there must be honey. But even though Abram had obeyed God by leaving his home, not everything went smoothly. Abram made mistakes. Still, God blessed him. In a number of years, both he and his nephew Lot had so many tents and flocks, there was no room for the both of them. Um, uncle, our goat herders just got into a fist fight about who gets the grass closest to the river. Who won? <laughs> Kidding. No, we shouldn't let this come between us. We can choose separate parts of the land. If you go east, I'll go west. If you go west, I'll go east. Fair enough. Lot studied the land. To the east, there lay the lush Jordan River Valley. To the west, the land was, well, just land. I'll go east. So Lot took the best land, leaving Abram to head west. Abram was years into following God, and here he was seemingly giving up the best land to Lot. But God's plan wasn't finished. He didn't know exactly how it would work out, but he knew that every word God spoke was true. Someday, somehow, his sons, his grandsons, and their children would fill this whole land and bless the entire world. What does this story from the Bible have to do with me and you? You don't want to miss what's next. God had a big plan for Abram. God promised that he would make Abram's family into a great nation. A nation is a group of people, like a country. God also promised to bless Abram and to make his name great. 
Abram didn't understand God's plan since he and Sarai were really old and still didn't have any children. But Abram obeyed God without understanding how God's promise could possibly come true. Abram knew that when God has a plan, nothing can stop it. When God asked Abram to leave Haran and move to a new place, did Abram go? Yes, Abram obeyed and followed God. He moved from Haran to a new place called Canaan. Abram trusted that God would keep his promises. Abram could have said, nope, I'm not moving my home and my family and all my goats and sheep. He could have believed his way was better than God's way, but he didn't. He obeyed and God blessed him. Just like Abram, we can obey God too. Even when we don't know God's whole plan for us, obeying God shows that we trust Him. I obey God when I do what He tells me to do, like when I make time to read my Bible. I don't always understand what the Bible says and I get so busy with taking care of my kids and grocery shopping and work. But I obey God and read the Bible every day. There will be times when we mess up and do things our own way instead of obeying God. God already knows that and He still loves us. When God has a plan, nothing can stop it. Let's pray together. I'll say the words out loud, but you can listen and say them in your heart. Close your eyes, be still, and let's talk to God. Dear God, we love you. Thank you that you love each of us so much. Forgive us when we choose to do things our own way instead of your way. Help our friends and family know that your plan is always good. Help me remember that you are unstoppable. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's say amen together. Ready? Amen. It's Bible verse time. Stand up and get ready to do the motions. Our new Bible verse for this month is found in Joshua chapter 1, verse 9. I'll say it and show you the motions. Then you can practice it with me. Here we go. God is with you wherever you go. Joshua 1, 9. Awesome! Let's practice it again, but let's sing it this time. Warm up your voice a little. La, 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 la. Sing with me. God is with you wherever you go. Joshua 1, 9. Thanks for singing with me. We put these words in our heads and our hearts so that they are there when we need them. Keep practicing our new Bible verse this week. Before we're done, do you remember how we described God at the beginning of our time today? It goes with this motion. Unstoppable, that's right. Our God is unstoppable. Can you do that with me? Unstoppable. Unstoppable! Unstoppable! Great job! We have an unstoppable God. Let's sing one more song to our unstoppable God. Have a great week, friends. Bye! Let's move and sing together. Get ready!
Are you ready to do a little cheering? Our God is unstoppable! Our God is unstoppable! Our God is unstoppable! 